Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's well. Great to be back with you again. Sorry about yesterday. I was uh, I was barely moving yesterday. Long start from the time, but thank God I'm okay now. We're good. Um, so we're back. If I could be sitting upright with God's help, I'm expecting to be with you every morning. But thank God I'm okay. Um, we've been talking a lot about this concept of growth, how it relates to Rosh Hashanah, how it relates to this larger, this larger world around us. And one of the things that we're trying to sort of drive towards together is a certain level of independence. There needs to be a certain measure of independence that we have in this world. Otherwise, we will be always be thrown by the world. People that have worked on themselves for a lifetime are really able to go through very challenging circumstances and be able to emerge with the same level of calmness, of focus, of appreciation, of even positive experiences than those who have very much better circumstances. You see this all the time in life. People with very little but internally they have a lot. And people with a lot, but internally have very little. And because we have such materialistic eyes, we always assume that those that have more stuff are more successful. But the more you peer into someone's life, the more you realize that the stuff that they have is only valuable if they know how to digest those things. When we ask for stuff, lots of times high holidays for some people has been like, has become this like sort of cosmic um, asking for stuff versus a relationship that is being built versus an internal experience that is being uh, forged. They did a lot of studies on, on lottery winners. Now, nobody here thinks like if I win the lottery, my life won't get much better. Like everybody thinks that if they, their lives, if, the lot, if they win the lottery, their life will get better, except for people that actually win the lottery. Because most people that win their lottery, the lottery actually gets worse. Their, their life actually gets worse because they don't have the tools. They don't have the vessels to handle the additional income at the level that it comes in. You don't enjoy, you don't enjoy the drink if it goes from a cup to a fire hose, the amount isn't what makes things better. It's the balance between what you're getting versus what you can handle. So when lottery winners win the lottery, especially if they are not built to handle that level of wealth that quickly, they usually have very terrible lives, believe it or not. The infusion of good usually hits them in a way in which people that they never knew were related to them now become related to them. People expect things of them. They really don't know how to spend the money properly. They lose it. They waste it. It's a disaster. The things that matter most to them, their relationships, their loved ones, the small things in life break down. And then when they're done spending the money, they have nothing left. So as we try to go out there and get more in life, as we try to gain in and anything in life, we have to recognize that part of the ability to gain more responsibility, deeper relationships, more materialism, all the things that we are looking for in life really require more of us to be a vessel and less of the world to give it to us. This is a flip on how we usually see the world. It's for sure flipping how we see God. We see God as the thing that is holding back that which I want. So if you pray and do things and like, you know, jump through hoops, then like maybe he'll give you the thing that like you're waiting for versus the, the more deeper way to seeing it, which is sort of, I guess, the Kabbalistic way of seeing it, which is God is actually giving what we need all the time to us. We just don't have the vessel in which to catch it. Right? The coffee, that's like saying, that's why we get the largest cup I can possibly find. Without making it, I have a bigger cup, but like, let's like, you know, have an awesome day cup. Like there's plenty of coffee to go around. Like it's not, it's not the problem. You ever go like on a, on a, like to like a hotel conference, like, you know what I'm saying? They have those like jugs of coffee. It's amazing how Americans drink coffee versus how like Europeans and Israelis drink coffee. Like you ever go to a gas station in Israel or in Europe 
right? Ask for a cup of coffee. They make you like coffee. They put it in. It's like an espresso. You're like, what? Where's your jug? You go to an American rest stop. It's like tubs and tubs and tubs of coffee. Like it is, so they give you like a cup this big, right? And it's amazing, but it's this big, right? In America, you get like the, the 29, 35 ounce cup. You just find whatever one, hazelnut, and just, you know, you just put down the lid, you go pay, you go fill up in gas, you do the whatever you gotta do, you come back and things still filling up and you're good to go, right? It's the tub that we're looking for, the coffee. So we want, we want the largest cup we can find. It's not the coffee, there's plenty of coffee, it's the cup. And many of us are in this game assuming that what's lacking in our lives is the thing on the outside of us. When really the work is not on fixing the outside to send us more, really the work is building ourselves into a much stronger, larger, cleaner vessel that can process the world better, that can maintain an experience that is in many ways not subject to what the circumstances. And when we work on that, when that becomes the, the, the majority of our work, we become different people. And then as a result, the things around us start to change. We can't do it for that reason. That's just what ends up happening. We become bigger people. And so people around us seem to grow up a little bit. We become people that can handle more, so we seem to get more responsibility. We become people that ha add more value to the people around us, so we seem to be able to get more from that. And most importantly, we become happier, stronger, more life-satisfied people, so the world has a very different feel for us. I fight, about, I fight this every day. The, the hustle and bustle of life for those of you who live in the New York area and work in Manhattan, I spend most of my life trying to fight against that. Even though I spend time on the streets of Manhattan. Because the peop there's a sense that I'm running towards something. But the people that are running towards things are always running towards things. It, was, it, 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 it shocked me when I was a young associate watching the the pace in which people ran towards the next rung of the law firm ladder only to then finally meet and spend time with the top partners and find that they're still they're also still running there's actually no end to this treadmill it doesn't end it's just a treadmill it's not climb up the mountain then you get there and you're done maybe that was once it's not like that anymore when you live in a consumer-based world there's always one more thing to buy there's always one more level of materialism you can get towards. There's always one group of people you want to be part of. And as one climbs in the material world, there's always the next thing that they're planning for. And everything material. It's unbelievable, whether it's success financially, whether it's uh, the things we have someone buys this beautiful big home and it's an amazing purchase they're always redoing redecorating something there's always people that are materialistic in their homes there's always a project in the home they're never saying okay i'm done this is great i'm good until i die no there's always another thing there's always something to get towards and when you live this way you you spend your life running, always. When you are attached to something deeper, when you are controlling your experience, what you really do is you're not getting more in stuff. You're deepening your relationship to things. It may lead to getting more, but what's driving you is the relationship change. You're not running to get more things on the outside. You're running to deepen yourself. When you're, when you're married or when you have family or when, you're, when you have friends or when you have clients and you're deepening your relationship to your people around you, and that's critical. I almost forgot, by the way. I almost forgot that this show is sponsored by an incredible group of people. I hope I can find it quickly. 
Hold on. Yes, this, this show is actually sponsored. I'm happy I remembered now. For the Aliyah Neshama, for the raising of the soul of the 30th day anniversary of the, of the passing of Jake Greenbaum, Yedidya Moshe Ben Aliz and Chaim, and to the Torah Thoughts in Class and Narrative, the women of the L 2020 group, the Psalm Sisters. I'm actually going to read their names later and give each one a personalized blessing. Uh, thank you so much to this, this incredible group who are sponsoring today's talk. And may the, the soul have a, a, a raising, an aliyah of the neshama. And may all the women that are part of this have the best year of their lives. And may every year afterwards get only better. But this is what we're getting at, which is the spiritual path. When you're in the world of spirituality, you're actually looking to deepen the relationship so that the things you're connected to have a deeper relationship to you. The people in your lives don't give you something. They themselves become valuable and worthy. Now, it's a complicated game that I want to make sure we're hitting. Once you are working on yourself to being a vessel, once your experience is really the core of what you're getting after, the things you get become less valuable to you. But the relationship to the things you have become more important. Right, less coffee in amount, exactly. The relationship to something becomes more critical. So what ends up happening is as your experience starts to become more of how, what you can control, you start realizing in order to get the feeling, the depth, the, 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 the desire of what I want to get, I don't need to fill myself all the time with so much stuff. Right? And I'll give you a, a, a more simpler example. If I appreciate food, for example, or wine, right? if I don't appreciate wine and I want to just drink it, let's say to get drunk, I got to constantly guz guzzle. If I don't really appreciate food, I just eat. You see people like this, they just, just gorge. They appreciate that, that feeling the taste buds get as it passes through. So there's like a little pleasure your taste buds get as the food passes through your mouth. So you like that pleasure. So you just keep at it. It never ends. You can finish bag after bag. You can sit at a table and just continuously eat. Because the, what gives you the pleasure really is the amount. You have no capacity to appreciate food for, except for the most mundane parts of it, which is sort of the immediate pleasure, the hits. So you need a lot of it to feel good. So that's why people sit down and they gorge themselves. But if you start to appreciate food at a deeper level, if you can control the experience of food and you can, you can appreciate the texture and all the different pieces of the food or the wine, you don't need as much to get that level of pleasure. In fact, you need less because you're deepening your relationship to that thing. What changed? It's the same thing. What changes you changed. You changed your sensitivities to things. You changed your work. And as a result of changing yourself, you now look out into the world, for example, food, and can take much less and have a much heightened experience with that thing. That's how, in a way, what we're trying to get to right now. That's what we're trying to become now. We're trying to become people that are able to appreciate life in a way that is much more deliberate, that doesn't always need the world to be giving us exactly what we want. We don't need the dopamine hits of the world. We don't always need sugar to give us good days because we're building an appreciation towards life, towards growth, towards change. We, we're trying to recognize that there's a greater power out there than me. And when things come my way, it could be the best things for me, even if it doesn't feel sweet. And I need to understand that, right? The illusion of validity. I don't know how to predict the future. I don't know if something that is sweet now will be good for me later on. I don't know. I don't know if something is bitter now, if the relationship that I'm having with my husband or my children or my friends, or if I'm, I don't know if that is going to ultimately build a stronger relationship or ultimately going to build a stronger appreciation. Even if my child is 35, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it'll be. I don't know what'll come out of this. When I'm being pushed against the, against the wall because I'm looking for something that I can't find, I don't know what that will ultimately do to me. 
20, 30 years from now. I don't know. Having a hard time with my parents, having a hard time with my work, I'm having a hard time finding the one that I want, my, my spouse. I'm having a hard time in life, but I don't know. There's a bigger world out there than me. And I, I don't have the tools to analyze the impact of something that happens to me immediately. So I have to build the ability to see the good in everything that I'm doing. In Hebrew, as we spoke about this, the word, this word called gam zula tova. This, this thing is going to be good, but I don't believe it. I don't know it. I have to get to a place in my life where I'm able to reduce the reliance on my predictive abilities. I have no ability. I don't have visibility to see this thing. And because I don't have the predictability to see this thing, I don't really know if at the end of the day, this thing that I'm doing will be ultimately good, which means I have to change my relationship to the thing that's in front of me right now. Because I'm used to being upset when things don't go my way, because that's what happens when I'm a kid. And I can be 50 and still be using the same processes I did when I was 15. I have to stop acting that way. If or, in order for me to control my experience, I have to now change my relationship to the circumstance. So when the circumstance comes my way that may feel bitter, I have to build myself to becoming a vessel that says reserve judgment. Engage with as much power as you can. Work on happiness. Maybe those things to something that's negative could be the best thing for me right now in my life. I don't know. I don't run this world. But when you're doing that, that process of engaging in challenges in the most empowered way possible, even though it feels like it's not natural because I'm naturally not happy with challenges. I have to work at this. I have to, I have to fake it until I make it. I have to act as if, right? I got to do all the stuff that we've been talking about here. I got to believe that I don't have the neuroplasticity that I can, I got to do all the things, but now I have to like work on myself to work, look, look at a challenge to hear the expressions from somebody else, to not get what I'm looking for. And as a result, find a way to get 10, 20% more empowerment going on. And I'm doing that because the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to be a vessel. I don't want my experience to be subject to that circumstance. And I don't know if that circumstance is going to be good for me or not. How many times has this happened to you in your life? It happens to me all the time. Where like something happens and I'm like upset and then it ends up working out. I'm like, oh yeah, I should have. Right? How many times has this happened to you where you want to get to the next level? Then you get to the next level and you're like, oh, I would have should have appreciated that then. When you're in it, you're like, man, I can't wait to be done with this. But then you're done with it. You go, man, I should have appreciated this. I found that with the quarantine stuff. In the beginning, I knew it, but I didn't like I didn't really appreciate the, the quarantine enough. Of what it's like to be back home and shut down. I want it to be done, 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 done. As soon as you get done, you're like, wait, wait, wait. There's a lot of sweetness there that I missed. There's a lot of greatness there that I missed. I'm not saying that it was all sweet. I'm not saying that it was all great. But there was a lot of sweetness and greatness and growth that I missed because I was so focused on the next stage in life that as I went through this stage, I lost so much opportunity of growth because I was so focused on next. If we want to change our lives, we have to believe this concept. There's a lot of good out there. It's not that we're lacking the good. It's that we are not the vessels that can actually take it all in. And when we build ourselves into becoming bigger people, and we change how we deal with what's in front of us, we change. And we deepen our relationship to things. We become more uh, battle-proof. We become more resilient to this world. And as a result, we are more effective and impactful on the world around us in much more subtle ways. Hold on. I have this, so this comment that I think I want to talk about before we, get, before we leave. What did Rachel just love you to say? Yeah. Yeah, so important. Let me end with this. Uh, with Rochelle. Who just said this? Is that Rochelle? Yeah, Rochelle just sent a great comment. Don't be so hard on yourselves too. No, 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 I'm not talking about being hard on yourself. I will continue this this week. This period of time that we're in right now, for those that are observing this period of time, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, how it all works, it's all connected to this concept, deepening 
returning to the true, sen true sense of self, not being thrown by the world, not using God as a cosmic slot machine to get more stuff, but recognizing that the creator is within us and we're trying to connect to the deepest piece of who we are. All right, we'll continue this. So great to be back with you guys. What can I tell you? I don't know about you, but I don't have, my day is different if I don't start with you. So I'm happy I'm here. I'm happy I'm back with you. Thanks so much for tuning in. With God's help, looking forward to continuing tomorrow.